like everyone, it was a normal day. I went to school in the centre of town, sat down for a bit and boom, out of nowhere, a bloody earthquake. I was standing on the street cleaning the car at the time. When it hits, you know, it almost throws you off your feet. It was like two people tugging a rug under me side to side really quick. My legs were shaking about. My stepbrother was in my room. He just told me to like get down the hallway and we were like running down the hallway and everything was shaking. And glass was all smashed in the kitchen. Very vivid memories of looking out the side window from underneath my desk and seeing the kind of 12 story library that shouldn't move, kind of swaying in the wind. Big concrete logo of the building that just psh, dropped off the wall, fell down into the glass veranda, landed right where I was sitting. Got that feeling of fear. Fear, just didn't know what to do. Couldn't think straight, pretty much. The ground's kind of wavy. Um, you don't really know what to do. Like, it's an earthquake, so it kind of fucks with your head a little bit. It's just a real state of emergency. Everyone's freaking out. Choppers coming in, sirens. It was frantic. Didn't really sink in until I heard that like, people were dying and stuff around the city. The city was pretty much just like dead apart from sirens. Eh? I think the TV and the news came on later that evening and you start to realise the extent of what happened in the city. Standing amid scenes that I can scarcely believe, the city that I grew up in looks like it's been hit by a giant wrecking ball. It makes you realise that when Mother Nature wants to, you know, wants to chuck her toys, you don't stand a chance. My mum and my family sort of have been like, one day it'll hit you, because I was quite okay about it all. I don't know, sort of taking it as it comes. I mean, in terms of normality, it was because of where we lived, it was just boring. Like, there was nothing to do. You couldn't, you couldn't do shit in your neighbourhood. Um, you couldn't go to work, couldn't go to study, so just hung out, really. It was a real airy feeling. Like, we didn't have, um, we had power, but we didn't have water for, like, nine days. It was pretty much local. Whatever you had local, that's what you were dealing with. My friends down at the skate park, they became my friends because I found out they lived close to me. Pretty much spend most of my days with them after the first couple of weeks. After that, I just hung out at their house. We'd skate their driveway. We became friends over that, figuring out they live close and there's just nothing else to do. People come into Christchurch over the next few years, the novelty was to go around and show them you know, this is a, what looks like a war zone. You show them the abandoned houses, you show them the knocked down buildings. Now there's nothing to see there, there's nothing going on except weeds growing. First rolling into the city, it all comes as kind of a shocker. Initially, I was really just taken back by how everything was just still leveled to the ground and how many empty, desolate areas there were. Um, so I didn't really know what to expect. It was kind of uh, really just going into it blind. When we first came into the city, I was, uh, I mean, I really didn't have, I didn't know what to expect. There was some stuff that had been rebuilt and a lot of stuff that hadn't. Yeah, there was no school. There was nothing to do. Um, pretty much skate, skate and skate. We'd all clear out the park, clear out all the dust from the skate park. 
clean it all up, have a skate. I mean, it's free. Once you've got a board, you've got a board, so you skate until your shoes wear out, pretty much. Our skate community around here in Christchurch is really tight. So even though it's hard to get anywhere, everyone would sort of make their way to one point, which would be the skate park. All the people definitely got a lot smaller, but I think it did make it a bit more kind of close-knit. Um, there are people that I know and skate with who kind of have collaborated on little projects and things. So I, you know, five or six years ago, I probably wouldn't have even thought that they'd be social enough to chat to each other and, and hang out. So I think that that's kind of pushed people towards maybe trying things they wouldn't have tried before. And yeah, it's been cool. And just the, I guess, the DIY stuff as well. It's kind of like, motivating people to actually do that takes something. The, the newer spots are coming up and getting some good good stuff off of there. Like the park, the park's real sick and it's um, which is good giving everyone something to do, you know. Everyone that came together and put their effort in on the spot was all time. Like we we couldn't have done it without them, you know, with the lo without the locals and without the help of everybody. And the, the DIY spots are pretty sick. They're all good that they're getting up there, but it's pretty fun. Basically going from nothing to a skate park, you know, by, by 6 p.m. the next day, that was, that was insane. That was, that's like nothing I've ever seen or I've ever seen that, you know. The project was more so to plant a seed for the locals, to inspire them, to give them something to build off of, something to build onto something to make their own. I mean, as crap as, as it was to have all that stuff happen, it's really opened up opportunities for Christchurch. Everyone's rebuilding. Like, I think Christchurch has got a really unique position here. They, um, get to rebuild the city from the base up. Everyone's looking forward. I think that's the whole big picture of everything, looking forward. I only started to start to see like progress in the city in the last like maybe year. And so that's exciting, you know, it's, a, it's kind of a good place to be here as it gets built back up. I think I'd stay in Christchurch just because I like to call it home and I want to see what it's like in the future. You know, get it all sorted and try and move on.